I've been using the Skywatcher Evo Guide 50ED and the ZWO ASI 120mm Mini guide camera for over 12 months now, so I thought it was about time that I shared my thoughts on this auto guiding bundle. And let's jump right into it with the specs of the guide scope, the Skywatcher Evo Guide 50ED. It's an apochromatic doublet refractor, much like the doublet refractors from the Evo Star telescope range, such as the 72ED that you'll be familiar with if you've watched this channel, because that's the telescope that I use, and the 80ED, 100ED, etc. One of those glass elements is FPL 53 glass, which is a very common type of glass used in refractor telescopes for astrophotography. Which does beg the question, even though this is pitched as a guide scope, could this actually be used for astrophotography? And we'll get onto that in just a couple of minutes. The focal length of the telescope is 242 mil, weighing in at 865 grams. It also has a helical focuser and a Vixen style dovetail bar, which you can mount to either on top of a telescope or again for astrophotography that is a very common type of dovetail so you could mount it to an HEQ5 or EQ6 etc. And it also comes in the white green black colours that Skywatcher have been putting out on their range for quite a long time now so it matches in with all other Skywatcher products. And I've been using the guide scope with the ZWO ASI 120mm mini guide camera that is available to buy as a bundle from places like First Light Optics and if you're interested in having a look at that I will leave a link to that in the description down below but let's get into the specs of the guide camera itself. The ZWO ASI 120mm mini has a 1.2 megapixel CMOS mono sensor. This camera is actually capable of planetary or lunar imaging if used with a UV IR cup filter as it produces 3.75 microns per pixel at a resolution of 1280 by 960. Now I've never actually used it for anything else other than a guide camera and I don't really know anybody that has either but it's an option for you at least. Moving on to connectivity, it has a USB-C type port, although it is only USB 2 speeds. And it also has an ST4 port as well, which you can then connect the other end of that to your mount. However, if you're plate solving, then you won't need to use the ST4 cable at all because you can just do pulse guiding instead. And lastly, in the box comes all of the spacers and cables so that you don't need to buy anything extra on top of what comes in the box. So that's a really quick rundown of the specs, but how does the gear actually shape up when you're using it out in the field for a night of imaging? Let's start with connectivity. So I use Astroberry for my image imaging sessions. Astroberry has the ECOS imaging software and also PHD2. So when I'm using PHD2, I loop the exposures every three seconds with the guide camera and I've had absolutely no issues with data transfer or anything like that overloading the Raspberry Pi that I'm using. Three seconds is fine. I've also used two seconds, but I don't really see the need to loop the exposures every two seconds. So I just loop them every three and that's worked absolutely fine for me when auto guiding. And within ECOS, once the drivers were loaded and I'd input the focal length of the guide scope, I have had absolutely zero issues with any sort of connectivity or auto guiding problems once all the software was set up okay. And the 120 guide camera actually comes with two lengths of USB cable. I believe one is half a meter and the other one is two meters, but I will put that information across the screen just here now when I look that up. And that is really useful because it just means that you can either use a shorter cable or if you do need a longer cable, then you've got that option as well, but you're not forced into having a cable that's longer than what you need, which I quite like. Moving on to focusing with the equipment, the helical focuser on the 50ED is really, really smooth. You won't have any issues focusing with that whatsoever. However, what I tend to do is just move the camera in and out of the guide scope instead because you've got the uh, spacing available to do that and I just find that that's an equally easy way to achieve focus instead. So I've already asked the question of whether or not the 50ED could be used for astrophotography. Now I've never used it for astrophotography however if you look at the fact that it is an apochromatic doublet refractor much like my Skywatcher Evo Star 72 ED and the range um, goes up in focal length from there. You can now also buy a dedicated field flattener for the 50 ED so you're going to get that nice flat field and then you would be able to connect a DSLR or dedicated astro camera to that field flattener. So I've never personally used it for astrophotography however when you look at the specs of it I don't see why you wouldn't be able to use it for astrophotography. I'm not going to compare it to the William Optics 
Mavic's red cut, I think that's a completely different thing entirely. But at a focal length of 242mm with a flattener and a DSLR or astro camera, I think you've got a pretty nice wide field deep sky astrophotography setup right there. Now I don't want to be one of those people that only has positive things to say in an equipment review, but honestly the only negative thing that I can find from either the guide scope or the camera is the fact that the end cap on the 50ED is just a little bit loose. It doesn't screw in, it just slides over the top and I think it's quite a loose fitting. I don't think that that's a particularly well thought out part of the 50ED. However, that's such a minor thing and once it's stored, I just leave my gear set up inside the house all the time. So it's not an actual issue for me, but it could be potentially an issue for other people. And that's the only thing that I dislike about this entire setup. So what I buy this bundle again when comparing it to others. So if you look at other options available for you, uh, ZWO have a 30 mil mini guide scope that you compare with the 120 mm mini. Skywatch also do a 9x50 finder scope that you can buy an adapter for which is a lot cheaper than the 50ED and people successfully use that as a guide scope as well. I don't, I don't think you would have any issues with either of those two options whatsoever. The only thing to bear in mind with the ZWO mini guide scope is that the longer the focal length you'll get the longer reach that you'll want on your guide scope as well. So. I think I've overspecced what I need in my current setup with a three inch refractor. I don't need a 50 millimeter um, guide scope. However, I know that in the future, I'll want to buy a longer focal length telescope and therefore I thought I would go for a longer focal length guide scope. And I thought I would go for the higher quality optics because I, I think the price difference in total, really, it wasn't that great. So it was kind of worth it for me. And as somebody commented on my last video about the 533, if you're worried about a hundred quid, then you're probably in the wrong game. <laughs> so I future proof my own setup, knowing that when I buy a longer focal length telescope, maybe a 100 or 120, something like that, that the 50 mil guide scope will be perfectly adequate for both of those setups either with a three inch refractor or with something longer. Whereas if I was using something that perhaps wasn't as high quality optics or something that the focal length wasn't quite as long with a 30 mil guide scope, then I might start to struggle. And at that point I might then have to buy an extra guide scope as well. So I've just future proofed myself. But that's not to say if you buy any of the other options that they're a wrong choice. I don't think there's a, a right or wrong choice here. I think there's just a choice that's right for you at the time that you're making that decision. I went this way, other people will go a different way. Both ways are perfectly acceptable. And the great thing about the 30 mil guide scope from ZWO is that it's so small and lightweight that you could also use it on Skywatcher, Star Adventurer because you're not adding that much weight. So you could actually start auto guiding with the Star Adventurer. Bear in mind that it only tracks in right ascension and not declination. So you can only guide in one axis, but actually that will still be better than not guiding at all. And once you've bought your auto guiding gear, I want to know how to get it all set up with PhD2 and start auto guiding and everything like that. Then go ahead and click into this video right here where I explain exactly how to do that. I'll see you over there.